Hi there, Surfactant and all the rest of you good people out there. I hope that you're all safe and sound and that health is with you. Regarding a follow-up question on how to create a realistic uh, tablecloth uh, kind of situation. Um, now, as you already heard, there has been uh, ongoing discussions on implementing um, similar to what you were exactly asking for but uh, as i said you can in a couple of minutes uh, create the same um, uh, with, with the kind of standard modeling features so let's do that uh, what we have here is a table and we want to add like an it italian uh, red white tablecloth on it and uh, let's see if we can do that so we will need some features here in order to do that. Uh, we're going to need a curve. And let's say we're going to use an offset curve of the edge. Uh, do it to the other side. Ten, yeah, that should be fine. So I'm close to that edge there. And we're also going to create a sketch. Uh, we're going to create that on a plane. Uh, on a plane, let's say, yeah, it could be that plane there. Okay, uh, might actually want to reattach that and go new plane because I might want that to be, uh, since the tablecloth has a thickness that will be a little bit above the table actually. Uh, we're going to include that curve that we just uh, offset there because uh, uh, we're going to need that. We can hide the other curves there. And uh, the idea here is uh, we need to create uh, kind of the requirements for the tablecloth. Uh, now, this is going to be a quarter of the tablecloth. So I'm saying that uh, this size of this quarter, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make it uh, square, uh, exactly square. You, you can obviously uh, make it any kind of uh, rectangular shape you want. Uh, I'm gonna make mine square, and that means that this side and that side is going to be equal. Oops, that side and that side is going to be equal. There we go. And uh, I actually do not need these guys. They were good for constructing this, but I don't need them. Uh, what I do need, though, is a line uh, that is going to be a line that is going to be from the center point horizontally. And I'm actually going to pattern that line because um, I'm going to need a circular. I'm going to go up to 45 degrees and 5 in increments there uh, because these are going to help me uh, get the length when the tablecloth fall over the edge of the table, which would be the dot dashed circle there. So uh, let's trim these curves off. Uh, we only need the length there. Uh, I'm not going to make any more... Uh, uh, or add any constraints uh, to this or dimensions. It's perfectly dimension it will follow. Um, but I'm going to be happy with that. Oops, no, I'm not. <laughs> Let's go back. I actually need uh, the circular, a quarter of that circle that I have in there. See if I can edit that if my mouse is quick enough or if my finger is quick enough. So I actually need that circle with a center there, uh, starting from here and going to up here. Uh, that is kind of crucial for my continuous work here. So with that, I'm going to do a surface and a variational sweep which is the base for the whole thing here. I'm going to, obviously, since it's a, a, a variational sweep, oops, I need a single curve, not the whole sketch. Uh, and I'm going to put it in the beginning. And I'm going to be happy with that. Uh, and I'm going to create a line from that point to out here somewhere. And I say that I want a dimension in between here. And I want that to be... It's actually, the idea here is to vary this between 5 and negative 5 and 0, actually. Uh, so 
I'm going to set that to five there to have something to start with. And then we're going to uh, also make this a driving expression. And we're also going to add a dimension here, which would be the 440 here. Uh, let's make that 390. That's approximately the same length as up here, I think. And uh, let's also make that driving. And uh, that sets us up pretty much for to create this variational sweep. And sorry about that, we need to go back in there because uh, it's actually supposed to be starting uh, with a zero there. Uh, but I will be able to vary that now. So the idea is to start from zero and then vary. Uh, we add points here where we want to add a uh, vary and I pull them to approximately where I want them. And the idea here was to use the, um, the lines I created there and base measurements of them because that's going to dictate the length, how much, or how long uh, the tablecloth is, is across that table edge there. Uh, also, uh, let's see if we get this to work. Uh, we want this to be five millimeter or sorry, five degrees out. And we add another point, uh, drag that approximately to over here somewhere. We say that that guy is going to be a measurement to that line there. And we also say that the degree here will be a negative five. And we continue. I'm going to do this uh, uh, for a while longer. I uh, get some error there, but that's uh, due to that we have probably not that got that point right there. So uh, we're going to fix that. Uh, we do a measure with the correct line, though. And we take that and we make sure that it's on there. And uh, we continue need yet another one we say that uh, that measurement there or that uh, dimension there is going to be a measurement with that line there and um, by the way we need to drag that into the correct position and here i'm going to wing it so this is the same thing over here as we have over here but i don't have the lines to support me and uh, so uh, we will have the measurement from the already existing lines because they are, they are kind of already mirrored there, if you like. And so there we got the one first mirror there. We need another one. And we need that to be a measurement. So I'm going to measure that to be uh, this guy over there. Say OK to that. And then I'm going to drag that to over here somewhere and we're going to need the last one as well and before i quit here uh, i actually need to fix the angles as well since i i obviously obviously uh, forgot those uh, the length there before i forget that is going to be uh, that very same measurement there and we're going to go back here and we see that we have varied some of these some of these are in, some of these are out. And this needs to go negative five, and it does. This guy needs to go five. And let's see here now. Things freezing up on me here. Five, there we go. And this guy needs to go negative five. There we go. This guy needs to go five. There we go. This guy needs to go negative five, negative five. And this guy needs to go uh, five is the idea. There we go. Excuse me for a while. Let me see if I can shut down uh, my communicator there you don't need to listen to all those pings okay so here we go uh, in addition I will also add for a little bit of extra uh, tolerance here uh, it doesn't really matter in in this case here 
um, but what it allows for is a, a surface that is uh, is not so heavy and is a little bit quicker to calculate for the system. So uh, we let the system run off and create our uh, surface here. And once we're done, we can hide stuff that we don't need. Uh, we do not need the curves. Uh, once it's done, uh, let's wait for it. Here we go. Calculate through each seg segment there. And that should have been a little bit quicker. Normally it's. Uh, maybe I got that wrong with the tolerance there anyway. I uh, don't know. Uh, let's see here now. We can hide the sketch there. And we now have our um, tablecloth. So if we bring the table back, we can see, yes, it's hanging off that uh, edge of, of the table there which is uh, kind of what we intended so okay uh, let's see if we can get this to travel all the way around let's see if we can get that shadow shadow right as well view um, not there uh, I think we have a scene preference here where we have environment and we should have ground visibility we obviously need a little bit of offset here. Let's see here now. 200, negative 500, uh, zero, nope. Negative 300, there we go. Uh, let's go with that. And let's see if we can uh, kind of multiply this uh, all the way around. We can also see that uh, we might want to Offset that a little bit further. Uh, so let's say we offset that, let's say 12, uh, just because we do not want the table obviously interfering with our part here. Uh, and let's bring back the table. Here we go, we got the table back. Um, obviously, obviously. Uh, that was not enough, or did I choose the wrong? Sorry, I think that the the idea here was to have this to follow. So here we go. Here we got the here we got the issue. We we selected the wrong curve here. So this guy is not supposed to be that guy. It's supposed to be that guy. Okay. There we go, much better, finish. So uh, we fixed that issue and we will have uh, the system update our view here and the curves as well. So there we go. Uh, now the idea here is to kind of uh, transform this surface around, uh, but in order to do that, I will actually make it a little bit smaller first. So I will extend the surface along that edge and along the other edge here and 50 will be okay and then i'm gonna need my datum coordinate system there and i will make a couple of mirrors here and i will mirror uh, this guy through that plane and i will also mirror these guys through that plane and there we go. Let's hide the table. So we need a couple of more surfaces here. I'm going to do them as studio surfaces. I'm going to uh, create uh, transitions here uh, between all these. And let's go apply because I'm going to have to repeat that a couple of times. And I do that uh, because uh, because not, I don't need a guy, I need uh, that guy, and I need that guy, two primary curves there. Uh, because uh, I assume that you might want to do this asymmetrically, uh, meaning <clears throat> that you might want to create different quarters here if you really want to go realistic. Uh, to me, I think this is good enough. Uh, so I'm going to be happy with this. 
And in addition, uh, we need a surface here. Uh, we need a, um, let's see, we go bounded plane there. And we say, okay. And uh, we could go face blend between these guys. Uh, so we can select all these guys and create one blend. And it's going to blend and trim in one go. And 10, I'm going to be happy with that. There we go. So everything is now joined together. Let's bring back the table. Yeah, table is there. Great. So uh, now we have a, a pretty nice looking table with a pretty nice looking cloth. We need to add some texture to this because, well, we wanted that Italian uh, red and white tablecloth, didn't we? So under render, we will uh, activate uh, the uh, uh, rendering uh, menu here. And we will start by adding a UV map to the solid here. And we will use one of the edges because that is con control um, how, how we map things. And in the material, I think I have a red and white tablecloth that I have created. Now drag and drop it on my on my table. And yep, there we go. So uh, that is probably the way I would go about this. And I hope it adds something to you or, or gives you an idea of, of how you could create this thing. And with that, I'm going to leave you for tonight. So um, all the best to all of you out there, all you good people. Take care, be safe, and uh, be kind to each other. Over and out. Bye for now.